What's good, YouTube? This your boy Chi World back at y'all again with another reaction video, man. If you're new to the channel, you already know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and make sure you click post notifications so you will be notified every time your boy drops some heat. Today, we are reacting to a kid that stole $230 million. I'm curious to see what this little man finna do with all this money, man. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. That's a lot of money, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of bread. He already living it up. <laughs> Bruh said, I'm finna go out with a bang. Nigga living like a rapper. It's the Wait, what that, what that shit? Go back. Wait, hold up. Hold up. What the disclaimer is, man? Disclaimer, this video is educating and information purposes. Only this action described the videos. Okay, bet. Yeah, so basically, they ain't trying to promote this. It's the 19th of August, 2024, the day a group of young adults carried out one of the largest crypto oh, heists so ever recorded. Oh, so it was just more than just him. 18-year-old Virat Chattal, 21-year-old Jandiel Serrano, Danish Khan, and Chen. These kids targeted a single Genesis creditor who had no idea they were about to lose a staggering $230 million worth of Bitcoin. But how did they put it all? Were they expert hackers with advanced coding skills? Well, it was much simpler than it seems. These scammers did something very clever. They hacked into basic human nature. What'd they do? It all began with a phone call, a seemingly harmless contact from Google support. But this... Hold up, gotta feel my camera. Camera fail. Camera dysfunction. Camera shortage. Malware, malware. <laughs> I had to fix my camera, man. It's on this uh, it's on this little small tripod. Tripod. This call wasn't from Google at all. Using a spoof number, Vietjetel, also known as Wiz, convinced the victim that their personal accounts had been compromised. With this false sense of urgency, he gained access to the victim's Gmail and iCloud, where he gathered key security information. Another call followed, this time from Janiel Serrano, aka Box, claiming to be a representative from Gemini, the crypto exchange the victim used. The victim was tricked into believing their account was under attack. Yeah, the evil is smart. The, to act fast, the victim reset their two factor authentication settings, giving the thieves the access they needed to take control of the Gemini account, quickly sending funds to a compromised wallet. The situation was spiraling, but the victim had no idea. When he was asked to use AnyDesk, a remote access software, it seemed like another step in securing their assets, but in reality, it was the final blow. As the victim unknownly shared the screen, the private Damn. keys to their Bitcoin wallet were exposed and in just a few clicks the digital fortune was transferred into the hands of the thieves that's crazy in a private video, they recorded the live reactions to the successful transfer of 4064 bitcoins valued at over 230 bro, million dollars at hold the time. up bro I ain't trying to promote this neither, but why would you record you doing this? Like, that don't make no sense. Clearly excited as they watched the millions flow into their wallets. How did they manage to pull off such a heist? How could someone with that much wealth be deceived so easily? And That's why a lot of bread, boy. The of committing such a massive crime? These are questions that might never be fully answered. But one thing was clear. The money was now in the hands of the criminals. And they knew their work wasn't done yet. Exactly 17 minutes after, they quickly set about laundering the money. To make it harder for authorities to track the stolen crypto, they split the Bitcoin into smaller amounts and transfer it across 15 different exchanges, a common tactic known as pill chains. The idea was to break the large transactions. So they transactions spread it out the well so they can't trace exactly trace. where it's coming Bitcoin from. Bitcoin was swapped for Litecoin. Litecoin was swapped for Ethereum. And Ethereum was swapped for Monero. The process took several days, with constant swapping between different currencies and exchanges, further obscuring the trail. Uh, go to the top right, the settings bar. Settings? No, not that. Like, the swap. Swap settings. Oh. And they live while they ha the why they scamming. 
you're so horrible. You can't. Bro, I'm good f***ing busy, Caleb. Finding a ice. Soon enough, all the stolen money was now clean money, ready to be spent, and the criminals didn't hold back. The day before the heist even took place, they were already planning of how to spend their fortune, sharing links with each other on Telegram of expensive luxury clothes they wanted to purchase from brands like Louis Vuitton, Givenchy, and Philip Lane. While some, most of some the crew chose to play it safe, keeping a low profile and resisting the temptation to splurge, one man couldn't help but stand out. His name? Malone Lamb. <laughs> he already look. His picture already looking like he finna turn up. Look. His name? Malone if that Lamb. picture don't represent, I'm finna go ham on the evening. He doing the e muscle emoji. Yeah, he finna go a hundred percent splurge mode, bro. He living like a rapper. <laughs> I hope this ain't buddy. But it said, fuck it, we gon' ball. We gon' live it up. That nigga turned already. Malone was based in LA, and the moment he got his hands on the money, he wasted no time diving head first into a luxurious lifestyle. Everything he had once watched the wealthy people enjoy was But see what's rich. so crazy, it's always a guy like this in everybody's circle. The one that's gon' get everybody busted, bro. Look. Ready he want attention, bro. He could have been low-key in the crowd. Look what he at. He on stage, bro. Like new reality. Nightclubs became his second home. Almost every night, he hit the club, spending ridiculous amounts of money on VIP sections and bottle services. His bar tabs were unbelievable. Some nights costing two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars, and even more. Imagine somebody money. stealing your money, bro, just to go do some dumb shit with it, just to go. You know what I'm saying? It's it's dumb to steal it anyway, but why? So you telling me you worked so hard to steal my money just to go to the club and spend a hundred thousand every other night? Come on, bro. He could have invested a hundred thousand, bro. Million dollars in a single night. If you were in one of those clubs, you couldn't miss him. Who the f is Malone? Hey, yo, Malone, he pulled up real crazy like it's your birthday. His name will be flashing on signs, and DJs will shout his name, giving him all the attention. <laughs> That shit crazy. I know that owner of that club is ecstatic. That nigga so happy, she bro. Became everyone's favorite because whenever he was around, everyone got to drink for free. He threw around cash like it was nothing, and one time he even handed a DJ a massive six-liter bottle of Golden Ace of Spades champagne, which could cost anywhere from twenty-five thousand to sixty thousand dollars. Another time he tipped a DJ two thousand dollars and had all the unopened bottles in the club sent straight to his he house. Doing he doing $2, shit. Two thousand dollars. When I tell you the amount of bottles he sent me that I took home, brand new, everything sealed, brand new. But as fun as LA was, he still didn't feel like enough. He craved more. I'm about more to throw up. More luxury, more extravagance. So what did he do? He chartered a private jet to Miami. There, he took his spending to a whole new level. In Miami, Malone settled in a waterfront mansion. Bro, y'all bro. House. It was if you were that, you know what, bro? If I was a criminal, not, I'm not one, but if I was, and I stole that much money, bro, I would have made some investments, right? A lot of investments to get return on the money I stole. And then I would have returned the money I stole. Like, I, I done took that money, made my money, and I'm giving money back. The same way I took it, I'm giving it back. I'm going through the, I'm backtracking. I'm going through all the steps, making all the wallets so they can't track that I took it. Then I'm passing it back. But the money I did take, I already done turned into a, a passive income. It's like, I made the money, make the money. Now I don't need the money that I took, like. That's if I was a criminal. God, thank I'm not. God, I God, thank you I'm not a criminal. But yeah, this is stupid, bro, to steal money, bro, and just throw it in the trash. It's it's kind of like stealing money and burning it in a pile of fire, like. It don't make no sense. Million dollar estate with a $62,000 a month rent. Wanting attention is a drug, was bro. Massive, covering over 8,500 square feet with 25 feet ceilings, 10 bedrooms, and a huge pool with a jacuzzi. It had two big front gates and a garage with a spacious driveway that was later filled with expensive supercars and luxury vehicles. Malone bought a black Manzori SF90, a white Lamborghini Urus, a fully kitted out white Manzori Lamborghini Urus with baby blue interior, a black Lamborghini Revuelto, the new Porsche 911 GT3 RS, the new Ferrari SUV. 
in black, two Mercedes Benz G Class, one in gray, one wrapped with mud. This shit got the indictment written all over. Stone, a blue BMW M4, That's it all. Another Lamborghini Revuelto in mud gray, a blue Lamborghini Urus, an all white white body kit Lamborghini Aventura SVJ with Malone's name written on the bottom of the door, a mud black Ferrari. This boy acting like he on another GTA. Lamborghini SVJ in blue, a pink Urus. You don't need all that shit, bro. Which Malone originally bought as a gift for his ex girlfriend to try to get her back, but got rejected again. A fully black carbon fire and he crashed now. LT, a blue Pagani Hara, and many, many, many more cars. If you didn't realize it by now, Malone was always rolling with fashion. He rocked high end designer pieces like Louis Vuitton and Givenchy. His style was expensive, with the most expensive piece of clothing being the McLaren Maya 70 by Paul Mayer. The way that boy moving, I bet you that 200 million, that shit gonna be blown in a year. Cars, Malone finally decided to invest his money in timeless pieces that would hold the value over time, like this Cuban link chain bracelet filled with diamonds, a Richard Milley covered in diamonds, and a diamond ring for each one of his fingers. One Richard Milley wasn't enough of course so he bought multiple even his glasses had diamonds Yo, don't take no video. Malone wasn't just a millionaire obsessed with himself. He had a generous side, often using his wealth to give back to others in need. He bought five Birkin bags and gave them away to random girls at the club. One of these lucky ladies was a model named Olivia Allen. Guys, I can't even make this up when I say that. That, I boy, going to that, that boy crashing up. Because a man gave it to me in the club last night. But this is your sign to go clubbing. Another lucky lady who got a Birkin bag was famous TikTok star Sky Bree. Me and my two girlfriends walk over to the section and this kid, I'm gonna refer to him as like a kid. I mean, he was definitely over the age of 18. He looked pretty young. He comes towards me and he's like, I got this for you. Little boy um, giving away free Birkin bags. Like it. It's beautiful, but to be honest, it's not really my style. While Malone was busy making his name known, flaunting his wealth at every turn, he was also drawing the wrong kind of attention. Attention. Spending, you, you, bro, desire to be noticed, made it I ain't even have to be the feds to know who who looking suspicious, bro. I got him like, damn, alone. Shit, okay, he balling. That was up. Damn, it's five nights in a row. What the fuck? What type of bread he got? Who is he? What he do? Like, it'll just make you curious, bro. And then to find out, like, you that young, you start gaining. You start getting suspicious. But yeah, brother was just bringing too much attention. So from the looks of it, he the downfall of the rest of his homeboys, bro. Easier for authorities and They should have told him to, to chill him out, down. bro. Investigators, including prominent figures like Zach XPT, were closely watching. I would have been in the club, fun, chill. I wouldn't been ordering no bottles. I would have just been there in the corner, the like you won't even know I had money. Came that his newfound fortune was linked to the heist, and soon enough, the walls started closing in. Malone thought he was on top of the other day. The scenes. I feel like I should be Charlemagne. Black XPT were already connecting the dots. Through his flashy spending, investigators tracked large Look transactions linked to the stolen Bitcoin, using blockchain analysis to map out the movement of funds. What's more, both Box and Wiz slipped up during the process of laundering the funds. On several occasions, they accidentally leaked the stolen funds with their personal assets. Wiz, for example, also leaked his full name during a screen Ooh. recording, while Box reused deposit addresses, making it easier to trace the funds back to them. See they messed up anyway the when they were sharing bro. investigators they should make a movie of this shit Bitcoin, bro using blockchain analysis to map out the movement of funds what's more both box and we slipped up during the process of laundering the funds On they need to make a movie about this bro this seems like a fine movie personal assets which for example also leaked his full name during a screen recording while box reused deposit addresses making it easier to trace the funds back to them these mistakes combined with recorded cover Conversations and digital footprints painted a clear picture of the criminal's activities. By mid September, the FBI and other authorities had gathered enough evidence to act. On the 19th of September, federal agents raided Malone's Miami mansion, where he was arrested, surrounded by all the luxuries he had bought with a stolen fortune. We have boom. And, mm, you know, mm. we thought that was shooting in the neighborhood. And we saw a lot of police. This was something that never it happened in the neighborhood. Most of the time, it was a lot of party. 
it was party because I can hear from my house the music. It was a stark contrast. Malone, who had you think like somebody ain't Justice gonna try to track they like 230 million, bro? Over nine million dollars in stolen funds, with five hundred thousand dollars already returned to the victim. However, a significant portion of the stolen money remains in cryptocurrency wallets. At the time of making this video, twenty-one million dollars linked to Box is still sitting in one wallet, while Virtual Tao, also known as Wiz, has around thirty-nine million dollars tied up to his account. Additionally, four million dollars of Malone's funds remain untouched in another wallet. But what happened to everything else he bought? The cars, the clubs, the private jets, and all the flashy stuff. See, when a criminal buys luxury items, like cars, with stolen money and later gets arrested, the government steps in and seizes those assets through a process called asset forfeiture. This allows law enforcement to take control of anything purchased with illegally obtained funds, such as cars, houses, or expensive jewelry. Once these assets are seized, they are usually put up for auction. In many cases, dealerships or buyers, including the same dealer who originally sold the cars, can purchase them again, often at a lower price than they were initially sold for. The money made from these auctions then is used in a couple of ways. A portion of it will go toward compensating the victims of the crime, helping to recover some of the stolen funds, Damn. while another portion could be used to cover I the feel bad the for that person that stayed up them long if nights. The victim is lucky, he can get 50 to 65% doing that crypto the shit auction, and they and just the fees. The cut, they get, get out of this shit stolen by some case, kids. Three of the cars he That's gonna do some retro shit. Lamborghini Urus, the Lamborghini Rev Volto, and the Porsche 911 GT3 RS were later transported to LA following his arrest. These cars were spotted by EFF Spot, a popular YouTuber who is known for his rare and expensive car spotting videos. In this particular video, both the Rev Volto and the Porsche appeared with noticeable damage. The Rev Volto had significant front end damage, while the Porsche was dented in the rear, suggesting that the Rev Volto had likely rear ended the Porsche. This kind of damage will undoubtedly decrease the value of these cars when they go to auction, Whoa. significantly reducing the amount the victim could recover. The same and it gets something like that fits. I bet you they're like 50,000 just to get that. These luxury items are likely to be seized by authorities and actioned off as part of the asset recovery process. High end watches, such as his original mini pieces, are particularly valuable. Hey, and when flits and go wrong, bro. While designer Don't flits if you ain't got it, got it out the mud. We still hold enough words to help recover the funds for the victim. As for the wallet spending in clubs, that money is pretty much gone. When you blow half a million dollars in a single night on bottle services and VIP sections, the clubs aren't held responsible for giving it back, especially if they had no clue the money was stolen. Same goes for the private jets. Those jet companies provided a legitimate service, so the money Malone spent on his flights is long gone. In conclusion, while most of the big ticket items can be seized and auctioned, much of what Malone spent on services, like clubs and private jets, is lost for good. This story isn't just about a major heist or the luxurious lifestyle Malone enjoyed for a brief moment. It's a lesson in green, the dangers of sowing off wealth that wasn't earned, and how quickly everything you gotta earn it, man. Despite all the money spent, it the should be a, out it should be a lesson. Malone's dream life, life lesson to, this, funds, to the young kids coming up trying to be scammers. You gotta earn it, earn it bro, or it ain't gonna last. The recklessness of Malone's spending spree are a reminder of how easily things can slip away for Malone and his friends. What started as a wild ride of lavishness ended in arrests and their names tied to one of the biggest crypto crimes in history. In the end, this high shows us that no matter how clever the crime or how big the payout, the law always catches up, and the price they paid was far greater than the short. Boy, look like rice gum a little bit. You were doing too much, my boy. Oh, by the way, remember Olivia, the model who got a Birkin bag? Yeah, she made a TikTok after Malone's arrest, stalling the Birkin with a police uniform, and also another TikTok in the same club saying, "No free bags tonight, just free drinks." See. Man, man, man. I wonder how much time they got. Or what was their punishment? But yeah, that's crazy, man. Like, that's a bit crazy. But hey, thank you guys for watching, man. Make sure you stay tuned. More heat coming soon. Uh, leave some comments in the comment section as well. Or what you want to see me to react to and stuff like that. But make sure you stay tuned. More heat coming soon, and I'm out.